Number five, a study of the rate of reaction represented by 2A yields B gives the following data. So we have this data tar chart as, as time is going on, the concentration of A seems to be dropping because these values keep decreasing over a certain amount of time. Now for letter B, it says estimate the instantaneous rate of disappearance of A at 15.0 seconds from a graph of time versus the concentration of A. What are the units of this rate? Okay, so estimate first and foremost, right? We don't have to get the exact value. We just have to be pretty close to it. And that's because we're getting information from a graph that we have drawn ourselves. So if you are drawing the graph freehand, there's always going to be a little bit of human error, which is totally fine. That's why it's estimate. So just as long as your answer very closely matches mine, mainly um, the, the exponent, right? Times 10 to the. So that's, that's basically the only thing that we're worried about here. But if my answer maybe, you know, doesn't match yours um, by a little bit, that's okay. Now, the thing here is that I'm going to draw my graph on my TI-84 plus CE. So you can follow along with me and learn how to draw or learn how to put in tables to get out a graph. Now, this is a little bit harder than just going to a graph, right? Because your graph values are always going to be linked with your Y values. So if you have an equation in here, you could press graph and the graph of, you know, whatever equation you give is going to come out. However, we don't have an equation here. All we have are values. So what we're going to do is we have to input these values. Now how we do that is we press the stat button. So stat, we're going to get a table to plug in the values. Now all you got to do is press stat and then we're going to edit the table basically. So all you have to do is just press enter. And now you have your list. L stands for lists. You could have, you know, up to, I don't even know how many lists are here, maybe five, six even. Um, but we're just going to be dealing with two lists, right? Time and concentration. Now in um, our calculator, we're maybe going to call the time list one and the concentration as list two. So all we have to do is just input these values. So for list one, I'm just gonna put out all these values. So 0, 0.0 as my first one, I press enter. Boom, the first one's in there. 5.0, enter. There's, there it is. 10.0, enter, beautiful. 15.0, 20.0, and 25.0, and 35.0. Calky doesn't really understand sig figs, uh, but if you hover over this, oh, actually it took away the point zero, so eh, it doesn't really matter. But as far as, you know, when we're doing math, I'll try to keep in mind for sig fig values. So let's go over to our next list, and we're just going to plug in all the molarities. So we have 1.00, we have 0 0.775, 0 0.625, 0 0.360, uh, 0.285, and 0 0.230. Okay, beautiful. So our list is in. Now what we have to do is we have to tell the, the calci to graph it for us. And what we have to do is we have to go to stat plot. So from stat, you go to stat plot. So they kind of go together which is the second button for the y equals. So I'm going to press second and y equals, which is the stat plot. Okay. Now, I want to make sure that my plot is on. Now, yours might be on, depending on if you've done this already, but I'm going to turn my plot one on. You don't have to turn on the other plots because we're only going to do one for this because we only have one graph. So I'm just going to press enter. Right now it's saying that it's off because it's in, you know, black background, white lettering, but I want to turn it on. So I'm just going to press the enter button and now it's on. The next thing we should do is we should just make the type of graph what we want. We want to see the lines. So that's the second one. The first one is just going to give you the points, but I want them connected. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to press enter. And now we do have the correct list. We said that the X 
value, right? The X list, aka the X value, is going to be the L's, L1, and the Y is going to be L2. Now, this is true because time is always the independent access, right? No matter how hard we try, we cannot fight time. Time is always going to keep increasing, and yeah, it's just something we got to accept. It's always independent, and the independent axis is always the x-axis. So time is x, and as time is going on, the concentration is dependent on the time. So that's the dependent axis, which is the y-axis. So we have it down perfectly. x is list 1, which is the time. y is list 2. Everything looks good. I mean, you can, you know change your markers if you want. It doesn't really matter. You can change the colors if you really want to have some fun, right? Red, ooh, black, mag magenta. I'm down for that. Oh my God, they have a lot of colors here. Wow. <laughs> I'm going magenta. But anyway, what color did you choose? <laughs> um, but now we're ready to, um, we're ready to get the graph. So we still can press graph. Don't be tempted because remember, that's always going by y equals. We have to press zoom. And we want that zoom stat. So all the stat buttons come together. So we press stat for the, the table. We press stat plot to turn on the plotting. And then we're going to press zoom stat. You could either press number 9 or you can go down and press uh, the zoom stat. Whoa, that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this over here. And let's see. Looks, I mean, looks pretty linear, but not really. As you can see, as time goes on, the rate is slowly kind of leveling out. And that kind of makes sense because this is of A. And the x-axis is time, which is seconds, and the y-axis is the change in A. As time goes on, A should be decreasing. Now we wanted the instantaneous rate of disappearance at 15. So let's find out where the 15 number is. It should be the fourth uh, plot from the initial. So here's the first plot, two, three, four. So there it is. Now, if we wanna find an instantaneous rate, an instantaneous rate always means that you're going to find it from a tangent line. Trigonometry, no, not trigonometry, geometry coming back, right? We have to draw a tangent line to that time value, right, or that plot. So remember, a tangent line is that linear line that just touches that only one point. So, I mean, this is going to be really close. I would say that's pretty good. I would say that that's pretty good. And let's see, if I could get this tangent line, maybe I can hit a, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Something, something like that. There it is. And to, to make it look like, um, I mean, it should be, it should be a little bit more this way, but I'm being very nitpicky. Um, I think we'll, I think we'll settle on one of these. <laughs> Let's see. Oh boy, that's not good. That's not a tangent line. Let me try again. Come on, Christina. You got this. Okay, that's the best I'm going to do. Can we just rotate this maybe? Let's make it a tangent line. There it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this out. And let's see, will it touch the x-axis? That looks good to me. Now, we have to estimate one point on the tangent line. We are going to take the one point that was given to us. But the, the only idea here is that the instantaneous rate, you have to pick one point on the tangent line. So maybe to try to estimate as best as I can, I maybe will try to get this point right here. 
let's see if I could grab it. Because all of these other values, I'm going to try to match them up with where my cursor is on the graph. But let's see if I could get that line all the way down. So let's see. I'm going to go down here. And it's 1, 2, 3 over. Just for my memorizing sake. Okay, so I'm going to go down to this point. I'm on it. Basically. And we're going to go down. And maybe to the third one. So one, two, three. I think that's pretty good. Okay. So let's write out these times or, you know, this plot. So from the information, we have an X value of 28. So that means this is at 28 seconds. And we have a Y value of 0 0.105. Okay. So now we have the two values. To make it easy for yourself, always use the point that's, you know, that's being asked for, which is the 15, comma, 0 0.465. because that's the one that goes with the 15, and then you'll use one point from the tangent line. Now, we want to find a rate. Now, a rate is the slope. It's always the slope of a concentration versus time graph, because it's always the change, right? It's the change of the concentration over the time. That's the slope. And... Remember, a slope is always final minus initial, right? Right? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. That's the same thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say it's my concentration over some type of time, which is final, minus the concentration over some type of time, and that's the initial. So let's see here. Rate equals... Seems like my final is more further out. So this would be my final values, and this is my initial values. So my final values is 0 0.105 over 28. I guess I'll put this 0 uh, seconds. And then minus my initial values, which was the 15 seconds, over 0 0.465. So let's do it. Uh, we can now get out of this and let's do 28 minus 15 and we get 13. So 13.0 on the bottom and then 0 0.105 minus 0 0.405 is a negative 0 0.36. Now negative it's a decreasing linear line. So the slope should be negative, right? The rate is just going to be roughly equal to the slope. But now here's the catch. Um, Calci knows math perfectly, right? Just as long as we input it, you know, perfectly for Calci. However, Calci doesn't understand science. And Calci is always going to spit out, you know, numerical values that are true to mathematics. However, when we're dealing with chemistry and especially physics, right, which, by the way, we have a whole course on physics. My brother will, will take care of you guys every step of the way. He's there for you guys on this channel. Um, but this is one example in where the negative value is just giving you context. However, the actual rate value is the positive value that comes after the context. This negative value means that A is decreasing. And if it's decreasing, it's disappearing. And that's what it's saying, the rate of disappearance. So we say this as, uh, well, actually, let's just find the answer, right? This divided by 13. Okay, so we get an answer of negative 0 0.028. And now this is the context. 
we say that A is decreasing or disappearing at a rate of 0 0.028. So actually the rate here is 0 0.028. Now the units of this rate, I'm just going to put the units right here. Keep in mind that the numerator and the denominator is not the same. So those units can't cancel. The numerator units was molarity per, and the denominator was seconds. And then you can just say that this is of A. But there it is. The rate has to be a positive answer. The negative just in front just means that whoever you're talking about is on the reactant side. It's just the context. So just keep that in mind. Okay. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in more questions. Keep studying hard. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you for being part of the community, and I love talking to you guys. Thanks for leaving kind comments in the comment section. I try to get back to you as much as I can uh, throughout my spare time. Thank you so much. You guys rock, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.